Welcome to another conversation with HPQ Silicon after they've put out a new press release. We are once again joined by the CEO, uh, Bernard Torion. Mr. Torion, thanks for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. So let's talk about uh, this uh, latest press release, um, HPQ Silicon, a project for the development of silicon-based anode materials for lithium-ion batteries. It's, it looks simple, but uh, there's a lot going on in here. Um, but before we start discussing the questions for this interview, let's talk about relationships, because like I said, um, there's, there's, there's a lot going, there's a lot to unpack here. Let's first of all just unpack who is who um, in this press release. There's a lot of big names thrown around. Um, first of all, let's define everyone, and then we can talk about their roles um, and, you know, and what they specifically contribute to this uh, um, a project. Um, so please introduce the different partners of the project. Sure, Derek. Um, there's, there's fundamentally the same three partner, partners that are involved in the technical side of it uh, that people have already known. There's a uh, pyrogenesis, okay. uh, who's sort of technological, talk, technological provider of HPQ. There's HPQ, which is you know, part of the process. And there's the NAS. What is the significance of this is that we have now two new parties, basically one from the provincial government, Prima Quebec, who funds money from the Quebec government to companies like ours that do research on advanced material through mm -hmm. universities. And the second one is the uh, Natural Science and Engineer Research Council of Canada, which sort of do, does the same thing a, a bit as Prima. Yeah where they finance research. So what this, the key point of this, it is two industrial companies, Pyrogenesis and HPQ are teaming up with a uh, leading expert in the university field in, in, lion, uh, in uh, lithium ion batteries. And we are doing advanced research that is financed basically 80% um, through grant from the from the two levels of government and 20% from the companies. Uh, and that's that's really the important key, you know, because uh, as you may well know, you don't get those type of money without having the science behind what you're doing, review, yeah. due diligence and everything else. So the yeah, key the takeaway of this is that... Um, you know the talk is there about you know battery battery new battery technology has been is being important yeah and you know the walk is there because money is available for us it it really gives HPQ access to a laboratory in a area that we just couldn't so very so, interesting but but how how does this you know uh, before again we before we talk about the project um, now they've already mentioned giving access to um, maybe you've already made a, a little bit, you've touched it a little bit, but I just want to know um, specifically, you know, and I think the audience also want to how, you know, all these this different um, entities, um, how does that relate to the success of this specific project here? I know you, you've already made mention a little bit about that, but I want you to expand on it. Sure. Um, <clears throat> the key point is... Um, Battery manufacturing is fundamentally a chemical process. What we are doing is material. What HPQ and Pyrogenesis are developing a new low-cost way um, to make one of the key materials that will be in demand. Mm -hmm. uh, the battery space is an extraordinary secretive environment because it's sort of like difficult to patent special chemical recipes you can try to patent it but you know it's you change one material it doesn't it doesn't work so there's an extraordinary high amount of trade secrets in yeah. what it's done and we're not trying to become a a, um, a battery manufacturers as I've told or even anode manufacturers as I've told uh, multiple times our aim is to be the low cost solution provider for people for for battery manufacturers looking for silicone materials for their batteries okay because i understand that the perception is that you just fit, have you know, just take you know metal standard off the shelf metallurgy grade silicone metal put it in batteries you got to get great results it's not the case it's a, it's a bit more complicated than that mm -hmm. so by us only focusing our work in in that specific area um, you know, we have a much more laser approach to what's going on in a massive market. We know that, you know, within, 
uh, nine years, we're talking about having a demand that could reach, you know, 200,000 metric tons. And we know right now the capacity to make the stuff is maybe you know, five, 10 tons per year. Yeah. That is a massive, massive demand that's going to be coming up. So once we know all these, these point of view, once you understand that the industry you're working with is a very secretive industries, um, even though we will send materials to, to all of those battery manufacturers, we will not get any feedback coming back from them. Um, you know, at the end, the only type of feedback is with whom you sort of like do a deal with, but that the, the battery manufacturers will use that to their advantage in your, in your discussion. So uh. having the chances, the opportunity to have one of the world leader in lithium ion silicone battery work and a university not far away, uh, what we can do is short circuit this because we will have information that we can publicly uh, send out. So it's, it's a very key part of our um, project development yeah. and our, how our strategy, how are we going to communicate? How are we going to be able to do marketing to, to client? Because, you know, company A, if they like my material, is not going to allow me to, 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 to scream out my material is good because company A likes it. Come and see me, company B and C. So it's, oh, okay. this, this is literally where it is. So, but I understand you've worked with this university before, right? This is not an offshoot thing. This is not the first time you are... Uh, HPQ officially has a relationship with this university, specifically uh, with Professor, I think it's Rui, I think. Yeah. Okay. The press release um, has a, a, a line here, which I'm just going to take, because um, uh, I just want your input on it. Um, it says, um, uh, blah, 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 you know, set up a research project focused on the development of silicon-based materials as active anode uh, materials, and then it continues. But the, the key word here is set up. So um, I know this was, a, it says it's a project, the press release says it's a project, but where are we along the timeline of a project? Is it at the stage of a proposal? Is it a stage of a project development process? Is it at a stage where you already have uh, stuff going on and then you, you brought in these partners to move the process along or legitimize the process or validate the process? Where, where, where are we along this, uh, this project timeline? Um, I think we're much more advanced than people think. Um, there, you know, the project has been sort of like on and off going on uh, because it's a continuation of multiple projects we've been doing with the NAS. Okay, okay. It's sort of like a culmination. We we just reached the stage where we're going the next step. So as you go to the next step, it's more complicated. You know, because not you know the first two step any IP that comes out of it is ours. Yeah. Not as we get into a bigger project where the government finance more money to university, there has to be some like a give and take on the IPs. Okay. So it's, in reality, it's an ongoing continuation of the project. It started for, for us with the university with the, the byproduct we developed with the QRR, okay. which we're working with this. And it's now expanded to material that we're producing with the guys at Apollon. We had some, some, some carbonation, uh, some, some carbon covering on top of silicone and it's moving it's also moving to our nano reactor so so sort of so it is it is really going to move to the higher level now okay okay uh that was this is why we're announcing it now but it's not no we're just not at the beginning no we're okay. we're, we're very advanced we we've we've dealt with all the 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 paperwork i was going to say the bloody paperwork you have to deal with to, to get it where it is but you, you know how universities and government can be when they do for grants Talking about that. Well, now we can just focus on doing the material. So talking about, um, you know how governments, let's discuss the elephant in the room, um, government. Um, we all know, um, anybody that's ever filed any paperwork with government knows um, that, you know, when the government gets involved at any stage of any, you know, doesn't matter the government, you know, state, federal, provincial, um, you know, everything suddenly slows down to a crawl you know, usually due to bureaucracy and this person has to sign off on this person has to sign up. Is there a concern here? No, because I've sort of learned that government works at a different speed in a different universe than we do. Um, you know, sort of why the, so it's, I, having learned the, the best way to deal with them is you only start talking about it once you've reached all the, you know, all mm. the ducks in order. If I would have started to talk about this uh, when we were starting to discuss this, uh, then there would have been a long gap of time before we actually do the work. And people would say, why is it taking so long? You understand this because you have an academic background uh, and a business background. But when you get academia and 
businesses work together, there's a great advantage because of great synergy. There, uh, you know, governments, uh, government laboratories or funding government laboratories can have all the toys in the world needed to do these type of things that, you know, companies would not finance, um, but that you need. So sure. it's very, very important. You know, the reality is uh, if we would have to develop and do all these type of testing, we, we, which we would have needed anyway, it probably would have cost us a million dollars just to set up the laboratories. Then we don't have the expertise. Then we have to hire this PhD to work on it. So it, it's worth the pain to go through the timeline yeah. because we get the benefit out of it. But it's sort of a strategy. I try to wait uh, to start to talk about it when we're at the um, meaningful phase, which is going to be starting sending material, coming back, getting more results, getting things moving. So that's, so that's really where it is. That makes a lot of sense. So let me read a, uh, a paragraph from the press release here because I'd like you to expand on it for a minute or two. Um, mm -hmm. So it says, and I quote, and I, and I read, I read the quote, um, HVQ and pyrogenesis will be responsible for the production of silicon materials from the PUVAP quartz reduction reactor and the PUVAP nano silicon reactor. The, INR, uh, the INRS EMT will be responsible for the characterization of the materials and the optimization of the electrode formulations and laboratory skill. Um, can you please explain that? There's, it's a, there's a acronyms in there. There's like two different technologies mentioned in there, you know. So um, can you just expand on that? Well, it's, it's, it, it's, it's not very complicated. It's just, it's actually the same thing that's gonna happen with every battery manufacturer. So we're sort of repeating any university area because we will be submitting material Okay. They will give us qualification. The advantage here is we can try every size of material we do. Like we don't care because it's it's designed to do R and D. So you know we'll do X size, X size, X size, and we'll end up figuring out. They'll end up figuring out a recipe or ad adapting their recipe um, to our materials, and we'll see how the results play along, and we'll, we'll get different ideas. Okay. When we're going to be talking with you know private industry, they're all going they all have their own ways of doing it. So they might be very specific. We want this type cut, we want this type cut, this type cut. Oh. So this is sort of the advantage because it sort of gives us a, a wider scope of what we can test. We'll get, you know, we'll, we'll get data from it. Um, but it's going to be fundamentally the same thing. Remember that a batteries is really a small chemical plant. That's what it is. It's a small portable chemical plant where energy is, is stored, regenerated, you know, done all those type of things. Silicone is an important material. It's going to replace graphite. But what you want to be able to do is figure a way to have, you know, for battery manufacturers, they're going to be looking a way to have a, um, a process or a material that doesn't require them to change too much their production scale. So mm -hmm. Professor Huey has been involved in the industry for many, many years. So he knows, and, he, and he's worked with some pretty big battery manufacturers. So he, see, he knows what they're looking for, for them. Um, which fundamentally we anticipate is going to be the same for everybody else. Mm -hmm. So interestingly, but let me switch gears here a little bit because it also has to do with the N, uh, the NSIR. Um, is, again, it's, an, it's another quote which says, you know, uh, despite intensive research efforts and significant investment in silicon battery materials, uh, materials uh, current manufacturing processes remain unscalable or even, com or, uh, you know, commercially unviable. Uh, now, this takes us a little bit back because I just want the audience to understand where we are right now, the, the, you know, with the, the reason for this project is, you know, um, can you give us a little bit of a background of the, you know, just a brief, very, you know, high level background um, of the, on the man, current manufacturing process of silicon and why um, the, the NSIR PUVAP developed by Pyrogenesis is a game changer here, because this is a key part mentioned in the press release. Yeah. Well, that's, that's sort of easy. It's, um, First of all, it's a given that you cannot use standard metallurgic silicone metal and use it into it. The reason why I know it is because you have to understand that in laboratory scale, you can almost do anything. Like a prototyping scale, you can do almost everything at lab scale because it's it's small. You know, we're yeah. talking small quantity, so it doesn't make any sense. But right now, the only process that seems to work to, to make uh, and take metallurgy grade silicone metal and to make it a material that can be used in batteries is by grinding it for 24 hours. So it's, it's, yeah, it's it's cool for a for lab scale because it's it's not that complicated. But once you try to go to industrial scale, you won't you won't have the uniformity. You won't have you know there, there's a lot of aspect of the material you won't have. Mm -hmm. So what people are using right now are basically the offshoot of the solar industries. 
they're using the reject material, they're using <coughs> the saline gas that comes out of it, they use the, uh, the sill grain material produced by alchem, which is basically made using acid and leaching and all those type of processes. So th those are all, and you know, you, you understand the solar industry. Mm -hmm. It's it's basically using hand-me-down from the solar industry, which have to be massively worked at to work, right? To make the material function because we need in the nano size. Yeah. We've decided to take a look at the question completely from the opposite side. We've decided to build from, from scratch, from the beginning, a process that will move forward. Why are we so confident we're going to be game-changing is because we also control the first part where you make the silicone now. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I've alluded to this, but a lot of things we've learned in our ongoing testing is that the QRR will give us an incredible edge over everybody else because we will be able to produce the raw ingredients needed to be fed into the nano reactors to make very good battery material. That's why I say it's game changing. Which is very interesting because um, again, with, with, with the press release for that, you know, says, you know, um, um, you know, electric vehicles, um, uh, you know, we are expecting an exponential demand uh, in EVs, which will create, you know, a, a, a high demand for battery uh, silicon, you know, um, can you talk a little bit about that? Because there's the three numbers, like in the hundreds of, of thousands, it's like, well, it's, you know, I don't think I have that much. This is the fun part of actually working in battery materials as opposed to solar is that everybody gets the fact that we're going away from internal combustion engine and we're going to all electric cars. Now, on theory, on paper, that looks brilliant. Uh, the execution of that is going to be painful, bumpy, and, and crazy. But demand is there. Uh, what, what was it that I saw this, this week? Um, the lightning, the uh, yeah, F one fifty lightning. lightning. I, you know, I, I saw that Almighty um, Ford. What was it? Lamborghini. Lamborghini is investing one point four oh. billion dollars to go electric. You see, and, I didn't even know about that. That's yes, that's this whoa. is this is massive. Like this is people can't even fathom the size <laughs> of the demand. Okay, so this is like who? It's not. It's going to be exactly like solar. You know solar, okay? We're the first one that started in the solar business. Are they the winner now? No. The winners were those that were able to understand, see the future of the market, produce the right material at the right price, and may have sufficient profit margin. Okay. The people that rush in head first to be the first one to be able to scream they're the first one don't survive. It's like in real estate. Okay. Some people build new power. It's usually the guys that buy it after the first bankruptcy to make money. I'm, I'm not talking about bankruptcy, but I'm just giving an image. Okay. Being the first one to produce something, and I'm seeing a few other people trying to do this, means that you're taking the most expensive strategy. We live through that in the solar business, okay? At one point, solar-grade silicone metal was selling for $400,000 a ton, if not even more than that. That was, that was insane. That was literally insane, okay? So a lot of people threw themselves into it. Now it reached more a price where it's it's within like it's within the the all-in cost of Chinese manufacturers fifteen dollars. It's selling at twenty dollars now. It's a normal market, but it's a massive market. Mm -hmm. But there's so many skeletons to this. I've seen this because you know, we've entered the, the, the solar business. Yeah. So, so and I've seen this in every industry. So I know that it's, it's the low-cost manufacturer that's going to win. So why should I bother myself to try to make a half-good material? Okay, especially since we've developed the QRR, which allows us to make the raw ingredient for all the other processes being developed. We have, we are very well positioned to be the winner in this game. And demand is going to be so astronomical that people are going to pay any price for it at the beginning. But then more and more competition is going to come in. So what we're trying to make sure that nobody can really compete is from the start. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is interesting you, because you want to be the leader. It's interesting and you say that because the manufacturing we, of silicone for battery. Yeah. It's interesting you say that because I see I see that trend with some companies in um in the solar space right now. And a good a good one that comes to mind is Enphase. The way Enphase has strategically positioned itself is difficult to compete with them, and they've you know steadily grown over the years. Yeah, which is a it's a very good 
you know, strategy to, to adopt. Um, but let's go back to the press release for a second here, because I like how in your quote, um, you specifically answer a boiling question because that popped up in my head as I started reading the press release. I was like, okay, okay. Uh, but let me read the quote, actually, uh, your quote. Um, it says, uh, this research project funded in large by, the gov by government grants will provide us with independent validation of our silicon battery products while providing us with quick and comprehensive feedback on the potential of our materials. Since we will own the data, and that's the key here, which I want to mention, since we will own the data we collect, it will be very useful um, when we present our products to a multitude of potential buyers. And I know you've already mentioned something about this, but can you add anything here? Yeah, it's, um, we understand how the testing works. So, so if I would send you know material to company A, B, and C, I would get minimum reply, be under strict NDAs and never be allowed to, to, to talk about the specificity. What we'll be able to do is be able to say, okay, this size material, we've been able, using the iron air RS technologies, we've been able to obtain those type of charge, okay? The other great advantage is, although it might, you know, eventually at one point, we will know quick enough, we will be able to interpret the data quick enough to say, mm -hmm after 20 to 35 tests, okay, th this is where the material is going. So we need to make those changes to the process and, and just start over again. Um, and as part of the funding, they were able to increase their capacity to do batteries like crazy. So it's, at the beginning, we were limited on their abilities to do tests, you know, have, have battery tests. Now they, they got capacity galore. So, um, that, and, and that, that's the key point. Like um, in this industry, as, as I said, this is a very, very secretive industry. Yeah. And if you want to go sell a product, you got to be able to talk. So if it's, if the buyer on the other sense has all the information, you have none. When you end up trying to negotiate with them, you're never known if you're going to be able to make the good deal. If you have enough information on your side to know how it's handing out, then you're in a much better position to negotiate. And that's, that, that's the way it is. It's, and when I started in this business, I had, you know, we had our courts department. They said, oh, come and test it in, in our laboratories. And I refused. And for the very simple reason, it says, I can't trust the results are going to come out of that. Because everybody has a pecuniary, everybody's looking to make money. Yeah, that's true. So people down the road to make money are going to try to, you know, to squeeze me. <laughs> well, it's, 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 just, it's, it's just the way the business is. It's just, it's, it's nothing complicated or, or difficult you, you just have to be aware of this i think there's a there's a big misnomer that in this industry that too you know oh you need to sign an off take agreement you need to have a big boy wanted your material no you don't i've seen so many companies fail because of that why because the guy on the other side knows that you're desperately looking for this so he's going to give you a bad deal how many deals that i saw where people end up signing a deal and then you get stuck with it i know companies that got they got this great deal with a great company. And then the other company, just they just have to sit and let you suffer and take time. Oh, we got to redo more tests, blah, blah, blah. So this time, so don't, like, don't bother me. Those are the results. Those are the material. Take it, leave it. There'll be 10 of you. But if, you, if you're so desperate to, to sign a deal with somebody at the beginning, you're doomed. You do. Yeah, that's true. And, and that's, a hard, that's, that's the hardest point I'm having with, with government funding to, you know, to explain that to them. That's true. Well, it's been really enlightening. Um, thank you for taking the time, Mr. Toyong. Again, um, for an, a lot of my personal questions I got when I uh, read this press release have been answered. Um, and I hope we also uh, did the audience some good here. Um, and again, thank you for taking the time and we hope uh, to chat again in the near future. Thank you.